Welcome traders. Um, before we begin, I'd just like to do a bit of housekeeping here. If you can, uh, if you can hear me, and you can see a tick mail welcome screen on your charts, you can type a Y in the chat box. <clears throat> um, before we get going, if you have any questions, if you could uh, keep those to the end, I'll open up a Q&A after, uh, after I've completed the material I want to share with you today. So before we get into that discussion, uh, first of all, we want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. As we know, trading any financial instrument carries an inherent risk and we can lose more uh, capital than we have on deposits. Um, secondly, and most importantly, the views expressed by me here today are specifically mine and they are not indicative of uh, TICMA. So for those of you who are joining me for the first time this week, I'll just give you a quick background um, on where I'm coming from. Um, after I graduated, I, uh, I went into the world of consulting and after a couple of years learning the ropes, I left with a couple of colleagues and did a startup. Went through some pretty rapid growth over a four to five year period. And um, I eventually cashed in my stake and, uh, and decided to, uh, to explore my, my passion for markets. Um, this was in uh, 2000, late 2004, early 2005. I had a bunch of time on my hands and some chips to play with. So I started to, I guess what you more accurately refer to as gamble, um, meddling in the market, so to speak. But I caught some lucky early breaks, day trading the S&P 500, and started to make some um, solid and then quite some significant gains. But as is often the case, my beginner's luck was about to turn. The market started to correct. I didn't really uh, understand the different market phases at that point. And so I just started averaging down on positions. And as the market continued to move against me, I uh, pretty rapidly gave back all my gains. And then I actually took a six figure hit on my personal capital. So it was at that point that I decided to, to really step back and assess whether or not it was possible uh, to actually make a, a sustainable income from, uh, from trading. So I set about uh, looking for someone to model, a mentor, so to speak, and uh, through some networking, got introduced to a guy in the States and worked with him over an 18 month, uh, to two year period, <clears throat> really not just up in my technical game, but more importantly, my mental game. It was a period during which I became far more uh, self-aware and really had to uh, change my focus from being a, a goal oriented individual in terms of my previous commercial experience to actually becoming a process oriented individual um, with respect to trading because it's in understanding that it's the process in trading that repetition executing consistently against your trading plan that actually delivers the results it doesn't matter what your goals are the market doesn't care it's uh, it's about executing with excellence your trading plan so after that period i came back to the markets in 2008 i had a extended extensive trading plan back tested forward tested and um and like i say started trading my own capital again in 2008 uh obviously not an ideal time to come back into the market so as we were, were in the uh in the throes of the gfc um but i managed to trade my way through through that year and come out uh, with positive returns at the end of the year and since 2008, on an annual basis, I've, uh, I've been consistently profitable. And that's really where my focus is. I'm not, uh, I'm not in emotionally invested in the outcome of an individual trade or even the next 10 trades. Uh, where my focus is, is the next 100 trades. Because I know that if I adhere to my trading plan, that my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. Um, the data you can see on the screen is from 2013. Uh, the reason why that is, is that um, over that five year period between 2008 and 2013, um, friends and family saw what I was doing and I wanted a piece of the action. So I set up a managed account service, which has grown organically and now represents a, a multi-million dollar portfolio. Um, the most important data here for me in terms of um, this performance data is down here in this corner. Um, when I have uh, an average winning month delivers 7.96%, whereas an average lo losing month just 2.4 percent so you can extrapolate that out to see that essentially i'm making two to three times uh, what i lose and that's the most important metric to me um, because i know if i keep my focus on uh, on profitability um, as opposed to hit rate or win rate which is really irrelevant 
um, that's where I will continue to uh, to deliver the success that I've I've been fortunate enough to experience over the past 12 years. <clears throat> um, alongside my trading, I also have a couple of other projects. As you might know, I'm a, a market residence, a market expert in residence for Tickmill. I produce a daily market outlook and also a, uh, a chart of the day or a trade of the day set of the day that I'm, I'm monitoring in the markets. Um, the other passion project for me is, uh, is FX Career Swap, a, uh, an emerging uh, trader development program, really, um, which seeks to help traders combat some of the uh, the key hurdles to taking you to from going from being a retail trader to being a successful professional trader. And um, we've developed a big community there of, of like-minded individuals who are all aligned behind the goal of, um, of becoming professional traders. We have um, some bespoke education. I teach um, the strategies that I've used over the past 12 years to successfully navigate the markets. <clears throat> and once, uh, once you've completed the program, we then, uh, then provide you with a funded account which you can grow and, uh, and grow a, a successful trading business from. Uh, so capitalization is really what kills uh, most retail traders. They tend to be undercapitalized and so they have to over leverage and overextend themselves. And um, they took a few hits and before I know it, the account's gone. Um, so <clears throat> we actually are offering a, a free trial for, uh, for that program, the TroPro program. You can check that out at FX Career Swap dot com right so that gives you a, a flavor of where i'm coming from let's move into uh, the material i want to talk about today <clears throat> first and foremost as we're coming to the end of the month we want to uh, check in with uh, with what we can expect from a seasonal perspective in the markets um, we've got on the screen at the moment a matrix of a 20-year seasonality really for most of the major markets and so uh, july is coming to an end we're heading into august now and um, what, what this matrix is telling us is that, uh, that the Australian dollar uh, could see some weakness in August. It's the, it, from a seasonal perspective, it's the second, uh, second worst month of the year over a 20-year average um, for the Australian dollar. We also see the same for the British pound, Canadian dollar to a lesser degree, uh, euro to a lesser degree, but still obviously uh, sub, a subpar underperforming. See a strong month for the Japanese yen. So what's our takeaway from that? Well, tend, when Japanese yen tends to trade well, we tend to be in a period of risk aversion. So if we follow that through, we can see that the Kiwi dollar has, uh, has a pretty torrid time. It's its worst month of the year, August. Um, and what we also see here is in terms of risk assets for the equity markets, uh, if it's actually the worst month of the year um, for those, and we see that the dollar index tends to fare pretty well. And so if we think about the risk metrics that we've seen in the markets, it's either risk on, risk off. Um, and if, we, if, if seasonality is going to, is it going to have any play in, in what's coming in August, we can expect some, uh, some risk off. Goldman Sachs have also highlighted this to their, their clients, uh, showing that um, since 1985, August and September tend to be the worst performing months uh, for the S&P 500 and it's a period during which uh, ETFs, so exchange traded funds, um, equity mutual funds etc, uh, since 1996, 25% of outflows happen in August. So again that's feeding into this idea from a seasonal perspective that market participants tend to, uh, tend to stay away or, or reduce their exposure to equities, uh, so in terms of risk uh, profile it's Paired back during August, and um, so that's that's something to have in your mind as we start uh, as we start heading into into this period that we could see some volatility, um, and then this feeds into the euro. So as you know, um, for those who have seen or been following my work, I'm uh, structurally uh, bullish the euro, um, but I think we're at a, we're reaching a phase at the moment where I think we can see a pullback, and that's a tradable pullback. So. I'm not. Uh, I, I'm certainly not suggesting that we're uh, we're done with the upside. I think we've got got quite a way more to go. Um, but in the near term, heading into August, so if this uh, if we're going to see some risk off here, then I think the euro is going to uh, going to have to give back some uh, some of its gains. Likewise with the dollar. This is this is work from J.P. Morgan, extrapolating through their fund flows 
uh, where they see a stretch in terms of um, positioning. Uh, Society Generale also did a similar note. And you can see that where to, last time we got into this area, um, in 2017, we saw, a, you know, we saw a significant decline. I don't think that's going to be the case this time because I think what we're seeing is uh, a, a structural repositioning uh, with major, uh, major capital flows aligning behind this idea of uh, the potential now with the debt mutualization on the table at least for, for Europe, which is, uh, which is, te which is historically has, has hindered the progress of Europe. Um, we're starting to see um, big players pick up a bit of exposure now in terms of Europe, and I think we've got we've got further to go. Um, but certainly at this point, we look a bit stretched on the upside. Um, so let's let's see what this translates to in terms of uh, in terms of the charts and opportunities. Start with the dollar. This is the equal weighted dollar index. So. What we're looking at here is the dollar index, the Dow Jones dollar index, which is tracking the dollar versus four other major currencies on an equal weighted basis. So that's the Australian dollar, Japanese yen, sterling, and the euro. And you can see here, we obviously we've had a, a pretty much a waterfall decline at the moment, but I'm looking for this equality objective. So um, this swing here, this last leg down that we saw, in terms of the, um, the dollar. I'm looking for it to be equal, equal measure, a measured move into uh, this one, uh, 119.86 area. And then I'm looking for, for a bounce as we head into August. So if we're gonna see some risk aversion in the markets, we should theoretically see the dollar uh, correct some of its recent losses. And certainly, what we'd be looking for is, is August and September uh, to be a period potentially of consolidation. And then as, like I mentioned last week, as we head into October, November, as the election in the US becomes uh, front of mind for everyone, and we potentially um, see you know, the emergence of some significant second waves in terms of uh, COVID-19, whilst we're without a vaccine, I think there's opportunity uh, for some interim dollar strength, but ultimately, I believe that we are heading lower in the dollar and, uh, and meaningfully so. So I'm looking for this equality move to stem the current decline. Uh, we've got the monthly S3. I don't, we, again, uh, if, for, for those who follow my daily, uh, daily outlook, um, City, Citibank, the, the quant team there, um, in terms of month end flows, see the potential for um, Euro strength into month end. So, this would, even though we're, we're, tra we're trading slightly higher here today in terms of the dollar, um, we're not, at this point, we're not through the volume weighted average price. So for me, this, this isn't actually, a, although this candle will be green on the normal chart, um, for me, the, the five period tick weighting in terms of upticks and downticks uh, still suggest bearish possibilities. So I think we could, uh, into tomorrow, month ends, see a test of this equality objective and then uh, as we head into next week um, maybe we get this this pullback in the dollar so i'm watching that let's let's look at the broader dollar index obviously <coughs> this dollar index is um weighted more towards uh, the euro again what i'm looking at here is the equality objective you can see we're trading just above it and just above this uh, descending potential descending trend line support. So any move down into this 93 area tomorrow, 92.50, 93, we're watching for bullish reversal patterns. We don't get, um, don't, you, we don't get tick data through on the DXY, so you, I can't, I haven't overlaid the, uh, the volume waste average price. So obviously I'll key off the, the equal weight of dollar index, but I'll be looking for a test into this area and, um, and then to see as we head into Monday, <coughs> statistically Friday and Monday, are the, are the, are the, have the highest statistical weightings for us to see um, interim or, or more meaningful uh, market tops or bottoms. So um, looking, let's, let's jump into the Euro. <coughs> so similar story here. I'm looking for the Euro to test its equality objective, 1830. Um, we've got a bunch of uh, FIB complements up here. So the equality versus this swing here into the 1830. We've got the uh, the 261 extension of the last correction also coming in 839. We've got the 261 extension of the initial structure off the lows here coming in 1833. So we've got a bunch of confidence. We've also got 
Uh, the projected trendline resistance using this trendline support overlaid here, um, 1850. So again, similar to that dollar index, I'm looking for this this uh, this test here to produce a uh, immediate a reaction, and uh, I'll be looking for a red close in terms of the euro. Obviously, we're seeing a bit of weakness here um, in the market at the moment, but uh, for me, in terms of uh, setups, I'm looking for it to test this area before uh, before jumping in. On, uh, on the short side. And again, my thesis here is, is not that we're going to crash or roll over, but that we correct during this period of potential volatility as we head into August. Um, and certainly anything down into this 114.50 area would be, uh, would be very attractive in terms of longs where I think, you know, we're heading through uh, up to 120 and, and beyond really over um, over the winter month as we head into the, the winter months and the, the election. Um, so we'll see how we trade, but in terms of setups, anything in this 118 to 118.50 area with a, a bearish reversal pattern, I'd be, uh, I'd be getting in on the short side, initially looking for 116. We probably retest then into that 118 area before getting that final stab lower, which I think will be the buying opportunity as we head into uh, into the winter months. Let's check in with dollar yen. Dollar yen is also about to test a pivotal area. Um, we've got this big equality move. We've got, some, we've got an interim equality objective all lined up here at this 104.27, 104.13. We've got 78.6% retracement of the March advance coming in 103.44. So any bullish reversal patterns in this area, I think offer a great risk reward in terms of doing something on the long side. This would coincide obviously with that dollar index uh, getting, getting a bounce here. Initially, <coughs> look for 106, price support, probably gonna be resistance on the first test. Um, you know, we might have to retest this 104 area, but, um, but ultimately what I'd look for then would be a more meaningful correction higher here in the, in the, um, in the dollar yen. We see uh, this trend line here. So that, again, we could be trading back up into this 108 area um, during, during a period of, of risk aversion. Uh, the other dollar pair that I'm watching today, specifically, I, I shared this uh, as a chart here. We've got this Canadian dollar testing the monthly S1, potential double bottom. We've got a momentum divergence down here with our momentum studies, and we're putting in a bullish outside reversal uh, we're we're, we, if we close at or above current levels, that's going to be a, uh, a buy signal from the VWAP indicator as well. And so for that, then we, we're looking at targets, obviously, and we use uh, an equality objective. So looking at an e equidistant swing here, we put us back into that 137.22. Um, and also we have the, uh, the VWAP resistance bands coming in around that area as well. So. I'm watching this one tonight and the close, New York close, if we get the close, and I'll be looking at long positions in the Canadian dollar. Let's check in with the Singapore dollar. No, it's not playing ball. I, I was tracking this one earlier. It looked like it, uh, it also was going to try and put in a bullish reversal, but not so much now. Eurocad. Uh, this one's coming into an interesting area as well. We have, uh, obviously with the Euro strength, it's, it's been grinding higher, but we're coming into some... Uh, FIB confluence here. We have the 161 extension of this swing here. Um, and we have the 78.6% retracement of the last leg down. Uh, so I'm looking at 157.90 to uh, 158.17. Watching for bearish reversal patterns here. And I think we could correct lower in terms of the, uh, the Euro cast. That's another one that's on, on my watch list. Similar Euro Kiwi. Traded this from the long side uh, this week and um, took 104, 105 pips out of this. Um, now what I'm looking for is the test here. You can see we've got this symmetry swing. Would we'll put us in at this 178 area. We've also got the 161 extension of this structure. So I've been looking for uh, the Euro Kiwi to get a move something like this. And, uh, and then I think we see a pullback, certainly Initially, what I'd be targeting would be the uh, symmetry swing here, which would take us back down into this uh, 176 area. 
Um, but potentially this could be the end of a correction here now in terms of uh, the Euro Kiwi and we could be trading back down into, uh, into the 172 area. Um, so again, tracking, watching for that red close in terms of the volume waste average price. See something on the long side. Sterling has, uh, has been on a run here, coming into some uh, potential trend line resistance here. A couple of trend lines really I'm watching. I'm watching this one currently that we're testing. We've got the monthly R2. Uh, we're pretty overbought here now in terms of um, in terms of momentum studies and the cycle studies. So if we get a bearish reversal pattern here, then um, Sterling would be a short. And uh, if you remember the, the heat map from the start, Sterling tends to have a pretty rough month in August. So I think we could be back down testing this 126 area support before uh, the next leg higher in Sterling. So watching how we trade, uh, certainly initially at this 130.30 area. If we get through here today on the close, then we've got this bigger um, trend line coming back in uh, from highs. Uh, which would have us at uh, 131.80. And again, certainly watching how we trade there. Bearish reversal patterns will be an opportunity to do something on the short side. So two, two areas I'm watching there in Sterling on, uh, on the watch list. Um, but yeah, we've got a cut. Um, it's again, Sterling Yen about to test major uh, trend line here at the 137.20 area, current trade 136.96. We've got some, some resistance there. So we'll see. This will coincide, obviously, with Ster um, Sterling the Major holding its resistance. Um, so that's Sterling Yen. So watching uh, 137.23, looking for a bearish reversal pattern. I think that would put us back down then at least into this 134.50 uh, would be the, the initial target on that. Sterling Swiss. Similar type of story, really. The alternative here, obviously, with Sterling Swiss, is if, if we get a close through this um, trend line resistance, then there's an opportunity to, to actually trade it on the long side. Um, but if we hold and roll over here, then I'd be looking for a pullback. But if we can get a close through here, um, ideally what we'd like to see is a two-day close as confirmation, then, uh, then we can see a breakout here in Sterling Swiss. And in terms of targets, we would have, uh, we, could, we could easily be looking to move up into this um, 127 area, uh, currently trade 119. So again, not always necessarily looking for, looking for um, reversals as such, happy to play the breakout as well. So I mean, if we get that close, uh, two-day close would be nice and there'd be opportunity then on intraday charts to get in on the long side, better risk rewards. And, uh, and then you've got a target up here at 127. And let's look at these uh, Aussie and the Kiwi. So Aussie um, coming into its, uh, or potentially putting in a, a ascending wedge pattern here. Uh, we've traded up, tested that uh, 72 objective, and we could be getting a red close here. So that would coincide, obviously, uh, the Looney and the Aussie are pretty correlated. So we've got a couple of opportunities in terms of the commodity FX developing here. Again, we've got nice momentum divergence. We're sitting at this uh, sending wedge trend line resistance. So initially what we target is a move down into the 70 area. We can anticipate that we see some uh, chopping around there, but ultimately I'd be looking for a, a test into the bull support bands down into the 68, 80 area initially. And again, just thinking about that seasonality as well as additional um, confirmation for any setups we get now heading into August in the Aussie come a long way in the Aussie and certainly if we see these equity markets take a bit of a wobble then the Aussie heavily correlated with those at the moment we can anticipate we see a pullback in the Aussie. Uh, Aussie yen similar story here um, we had that double top last week that I talked about we haven't really seen uh, the depth of pullback that we uh, that we would anticipate because obviously the Aussie has uh, remained elevated. So the, the you know the, the the major the headline pair is, is going to be what drives the action. So we'll wait to see if we can get that close red close tonight, and there'll be opportunities on the short side in the Aussie. Aussie CAD is also another one I'm watching. We've got significant momentum divergence, and if, again, it's going to be driven um, by the Aussie. So we'll uh, we'll keep an eye on that tonight. Uh, Kiwi. Similar story here. Kiwi, I, I was looking for the Kiwi to test this, uh, this 67.20, 67.50 uh, area. 
that would have been the ideal setup. Um, obviously, we don't always get those, but um, I'm looking for a, the Kiwi to, to have a, a rougher time during August, and certainly we should be back testing 65 area trend line supports um, would be the natural objective. We can see the vol bands coming in just into that area, so uh, that would be the initial objective. If we start to uh, if we start to get a bit of traction on the downside, then what I look for is uh, symmetry swing. So this last corrective leg here, the biggest one um, during this phase of price action. So if we can get that uh, that to develop, then we could uh, we could see a 6420 test. I think, um, as we head into August, and again that, uh, that those will potentially be giving us buying opportunities. As certainly I, I would still envisage that we test this uh, this thirty uh, first December uh, high twenty nineteen, and so uh, once we get into this area, I'd certainly be looking for um, bullish reversal patterns on the, the daily charts to uh, to set long positions. And let's check in just finally here with uh, the S and P. And see where we are. So, the S and P. Um, ideally, what I'd love to uh, what I'd love to see here would be a retest of these these prior cycle highs at this one thirty three ninety four. Um, we're we're holding a projected channel here. So, if we can get a pop into tomorrow, uh, then that would uh, that would be a great setup then for us to, to potentially have a wobble heading into um, August, and that would further support the idea that we we see a rollover in the more risky aligned um, FX pairs. So watching for that uh, 3368 to 3402 area, bearish reversal patterns will be a, a selling opportunity. The NASDAQ, we've got a lot of tech earnings out tonight. Um, still holding the channel at the moment. So again, with this NASDAQ, what I anticipate is we get one, one more pop here. We've got a divergence uh, galore in terms of the momentum studies. And then, uh, then I've been looking for uh, for a, certainly a tradable pullback in terms of uh, the Nasdaq. Uh, last but not least, let's check in with gold. Obviously, it's been on uh, been on a tear. Um, what I want to actually show you is a slide um, I got here. Uh, this is a, an analog of gold versus the the last time we saw major um, quantitative easing, 2010 to 2011, and you can see the similarities in terms of the price action. So. I, I think there is further to go in gold, but it, I, I, I don't believe in chasing it at the current levels. Um, I mean, um, James, I'm using the daily time frame. Uh, I don't think we need to chase it at current levels. I think that there's certainly a tradable pullback. But again, heading into back end of the year, then we can see some significant, uh, another significant leg like higher potential in terms of gold. So I'll be looking for a correction. Um, the other thing to watch as well, which is important, is, uh, is the monthly close because what we could be looking at is, uh, is a very significant potential double top here if we, uh, if we fail to take out these prior highs, it's 1910 on a closing basis. So uh, this is the monthly chart, obviously month end tomorrow. So I'd be checking in with these monthly charts over the weekend and seeing where, where we are from the much higher time frame. It's, it's very useful to understand the bigger patterns in place. So certainly if, uh, if gold, falls back here and we get a close back below 119.10, uh, then we could see a more meaningful pullback. However, if we can close above here at current levels are higher, the next uh, upside objective becomes 21.46 en route to, uh, to ultimately test 24.45 would be the, uh, the objective for this next leg higher in terms of gold. So again, key to watch the, the monthly close tonight to, uh, to get a sense of uh, the, the momentum in gold. Okay, those are the, basically the charts that I'm watching at the moment, guys. Um, like I say, looking for some, some volatility as we head into August. I can see some, some pairs that can mean reverse a little. But again, my, my, my overriding view is that um, the dollar has, uh, has, is, on, is in the early stages of a, uh, a more protracted decline. And some of these pairs, like the euro and sterling, uh, some of the uh, risk, riskier FX, uh, are in the nascent stages of uh, what I think are going to be structural moves higher um, is the uh, is the key takeaway. Okay, are there uh, are there any questions? Would anyone like to take a look at the chart that I haven't looked at? You can type the chart in the chat box, or type your question in the chat box, or I can unmute your mic and you can uh, you can ask me a question live. 
Uh, Swiss Yen. Swiss Yen and crude, okay. Uh, let's go daily. Okay, so I mean, the, the Swiss yen pulled back into and held um, this prior prior resistance now as support. So I'd have, um, I'd be expecting higher. Uh, I, if we take out this 115.55, um, then it's, uh, we, you know, we've got this, uh, sorry, this equality objective here. So we clone that which would put us up into um, the 161 extension of this swing here, this structure. And then above there, we've got the big uh, equality objective at 117.99. Um, does that answer, Charlie, with the Swiss yen? So, we, I mean, it's difficult, you can't, it's difficult to get bearish on this until we, we trade back down below these, uh, these prior highs here. So they've held it, put in an outside reversal yesterday. So it looks pretty bullish at the moment. Um, crude. So I mean, crude is kind of in a holding pattern now. Um, as we wait to see, you know, what's going to happen with these reopenings. Um, yeah, I mean, we're, certainly there is divergence, but you know, this is this might, in terms of uh, you know, this is being fundamentally driven. I mean, we saw. The washout of all washouts and crude and um, what I think you're seeing here is is actually a lack of participation that participants are simply not engaged in the market so we're just grinding higher here um, and you, you're going to find less uh, that the, the momentum is going to have less of an impact when you don't have I mean from what I understand at the moment open interest in terms of crude is at horrifically low levels so I mean all the guys that got hit on that uh, on that decline, uh, you know, they, those were the major market participants, and so without those, you've just got a you know a market that's going drifting, glide, you know, grinding higher without much participation. So again, it's it, you to to really benefit from momentum divergence, you have to be trading uh, a highly liquid asset. If that makes sense. Um, I did see, oh, Q and A, one second. Mm -hmm. uh, Arnold, um, I hope I think I've answered that. If um, if you would just uh, if you only just joined us, I'm happy to go back over it. But I think I answered that. Uh, Anonymous, can you please explain what you mean by risk on, risk off? Um, risk on, risk off simply refers to the market, the market's perspective. So when we're in a risk on mode. Um, People want to allocate assets uh, that are going to yield high returns. So um, you're going to take your cash that you've got in your savings account and you're going to invest in stocks um, or you're going to, uh, you're going to invest in, in higher yielding assets than you, than you get from the bank just saving your cash. Whereas um, when markets are in a risk off mode, then they, they're looking for uh, low yielding safe haven assets. So traditionally that's been the bond market, but with the uh, Federal Reserve flooding the market with liquidity, uh, bond yields are, 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 are you know, you're, you're almost paying them to hold your cash, certainly you are in Europe. Um, so that's what's causing a drive into things like the dollar, into the Swiss franc, into the Japanese yen, um, which are considered safe havens during a period of, of risk off. Does that make sense? So in a more in a risk on environment, money's going to go into the Australian dollar, Kiwi dollar, the euro, sterling. Um, that's the that's the dynamic. Uh, Ed, very nice. Um, how much do you take into account current sentiment regarding directional moves to either dispute or confirm what you're seeing in the tech? So uh, thanks for the comment, Ed. Um, so for me, the, the technicals drive drive everything. And, um, you know, I, I believe personally that everything that is known about a market is in its current price. Um, and then there's a disagreement between buyers and, t and sellers in terms of future price. Um, but what I use to, you know, I, I'm always, I'm tracking all this, uh, you know, seasonalities, flows, uh, specifically in Forex, you know, the market, 
in, in the stock market, it's driven by analysis of, of earnings and, and balance sheets, et cetera. Um, whereas in the, in the Forex markets, it's driven by flows, big, big capital flows moving and shifting. And if you can get a handle on the, the footprints of that, um, like, you know, I, I share with the, the guys in, in, in my trading team every day, uh, the UBS, JP Morgan, and trading desk comments, because those trading desks see the greatest amount of, of interbank flow in the market. And so they have a great read on where the flow is going. And then they're identifying levels where they anticipate that they, you know, these major participants will look to engage the market. So absolutely the technicals drive everything for me. Um, what I, what, you know, what I really keep abreast of is the market dynamics and what are the market narratives, because those narratives, um, aligned with fundamentals will, will, will either make the technical pa pattern play out or not play out. Does that make sense, Ed? Okay, any other questions? Okay, if there aren't any other questions, Guys, I'm going to wrap this up here. I hope you, uh, hope you found that useful. And, um, and we'll reconvene in the first week of August and see, uh, see if we get this anticipated volatility. Okay, thanks very much for your time.